If you're not going to sort your paper vertically, you're going to need to make some sorting templates like this, and then you'll spread those around your dining room table, over the couch, through the counters in the kitchen, uh, whatever need be. There's some pictures up on the challenge page of people doing that so that you can sort that way as well. For the sake of ease and space, um, sorting your paper, definitely going to be easier if you're using vertical storage. So the first thing you need to do is get your paper storage boxes, your vertical storage, and then you need to create some dividers that are going to follow, <coughs> excuse me, your um, themes and sentiments, right? Your three sections. So with these, I just used, I didn't do anything fancy. I just created, I just used a piece of ugly green card stock and um, uh, shut your flap tab, right? So I could create as many dividers as I needed um, just doing that and then use them as dividers, right? Initially, I did the same kind of concept, but I used, um, this is just chipboard backs or chipboard sheets, right? I used a stick-on tab from the office supply store. So you can create your own dividers for, um, to, to do that. I'm going to use, these are our paper storage box dividers, and these are the divider tabs. I'm going to turn it around this way because the rainbow words are easier to see. Um, so I, these are all the tabs that I know that I'm going to work with. Now, if you haven't sorted your paper already, right, I pulled these tabs out of my messy stack as I was gathering paper together. Um, what you're going to want to do is, again, use sticky notes to label your tabs initially. Let's see if I have some in here. So if I was... If I was doing this for the first time, I wouldn't have a permanent label there. I would have a sticky note that said B, and then I would be sorting behind that B category, beach, baby, birthday, whatever it is, right? At the point that I drop multiple um, uh, themes in there, beach, baby, birthday, I would also take a sticky note and tag that beach baby birthday and then as I found more beach baby birthday paper I would have kind of that subcategory started already right the reason I would suggest that you don't create your permanent tabs first is because even though you think you know what you craft about and you've got your you know themes and sentiments list here when you start going through your products you're probably going to find that you don't really have things that fit a particular theme um, or that you're going to combine themes together, and so you don't want to have your permanent labels on there in the first round. So use something like sticky notes to label your um, divider tabs first, and then you can decide how you're going to label those, right? So you may think, oh, I have a ton of birthday stuff, but you really only have a couple of birthday things. I know as we get older, birthdays get less and less important as our kids grow up and go away. And so... Um, where I used to have a lot of stuff in birthday, now I've sort of combined everything into celebrate, right? Um, so as your life changes, your four section system is gonna change, your themes are gonna change as well. And then at some point when my boys get married and they have uh, children and I have grandchildren, I'll probably bring back birthday or kid birthday, right? So the beautiful thing about the four section system is you can adapt it for what you're working on as you're going. Okay, so let's talk about the physical process. So I, when I start the physical process of organizing my paper, I'm going to start with one box with all of my tabs in it, right? Why am I going to do that? Because as I add things, paper, I have all my things stacked up here. As I go through my stack here, blue floral, I'm going to go to my blue tab. Oh, here's the next thing. You can see how this paper is sticking out the top, and that's because it has this little tab at the top, right? So keep that in mind. Which way do you want your tab to go? Uh, for me, I want all the paper to be the same height this way across the top. So I'm going to turn my paper with tabs to the side, and that's going to give me that 12 inches. It's always going to be the same. So I'm going to have more length on the side but my height is going to be all the same as I'm sorting, and that's going to keep things nice and neat and orderly. And then I'm going to go right here to my blue tab, and I'm going to drop those papers in behind blue, right? And as I work through my pile, there's another blue floral. I'm just going to keep 
literally filing paper away as I go through. Then my box is going to start to get full and it's going to get harder to just drop things in. At that point, I'm going to take a second box and I'm going to add that and I'm just going to divide and I'm going to keep filing, right? So my papers are, my space is going to stay small and compact and I'm not expanding it until I fill it up and it's easy to get to more things and drop them in and it also keeps my papers straight up and down as I'm going through the process, right? So I'm going to work through my piles of paper, dropping things into where they belong. Um, using um, sticky notes to subdivide things, right? Um, and then I'm going to have all my paper organized in the first round that way. At that point, um, you can decide how much, how much more detail or division that you want to do, right? So if I've got beach baby birthday under B, um, I may want to, I may say, hey, my birthday section's really big. I'm not going to, I'm going to have birthday as a separate section, right? Um, so keep that in mind as you're going. You're going to do the major sort and then you're, when you label your tabs, that's when you're going to divide things up into, into more finer categories or more defined categories. Now, your color tabs, you can start with color tabs permanently marked because the rainbow is the rainbow, right? But keep in mind as you're planning out your tab spread um, that the rainbow is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, Roy G. Biv, but you also have black, white, browns, tans, and metallics that you want to incorporate into your rainbow. So if, you're, if you haven't done this before and you don't have all of those things mapped out, again, start with a sticky note on your tab and then decide how you're going to define those um, sections or those colors as you go through the process. Okay, so let's talk about adding things in and keeping things together you use together and all that stuff. Once you've got your paper sorted, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to follow my thing here so I don't leave things out like I did last, last week. Okay. Uh, so let's talk about choosing the tools that you're going to use. <laughs> A lot of you have scrap racks, use scrap racks, um, and you're, you think, should I put all my paper into my scrap rack? Um, some of you think, I don't want to have any paper in my scrap rack. I'm going to use, I'm going to put everything in paper storage boxes, go vertical with everything, right? So the way that I think about it is if I can put all the paper for a theme or category into one or two um, page pockets into, in the scrap rack, then that's what I do. So something like ballet, where I just have a couple of sheets of paper, or St. Patrick's Day, where I have six sheets of paper for St. Patrick's Day and a couple of stickers, that's going to go right into my scrap rack, because when I flip through, I'm thinking, I'm working on St. Patrick's Day, I flip to St. Patrick's Day, everything's right there. I don't have to look anywhere else. Um, I'm a junkie for travel-themed paper. I love it, so I have tons of it. It would never fit in my scrap rack, right? It's going to be in my paper storage boxes. Um, and it's just going to be in the theme section under T for travel. And again, if I'm working on travel, I can pull that themes box, bring it to my workspace, and have all that travel paper right there with me, right? So you're prob there's probably going to be a hybrid of how your papers are stored and where they're stored. Remember, the most important thing is linking things back and forth so that you can find them. If you have kits and stacks, which we just talked about, so... Now I've got this kit, I mean, I've got this stack, this Valentine's paper, and I'm just going to put it right here between the boxes. So this would be uh, rainbow, this would be calendar year. Now I've got that paper stack. It's standing vertically. I can pull it out if I'm going to work with it. It's nearest to the theme that it goes with, calendar year, right, rainbow. I added a little sticky note to the end so that I would remember that I had it and that I would see it and use it, right? But I'm not going to take the whole paper pad apart. So you're just going to incorporate that right into your vertical storage um, system as well. So that's how you're going to put those paper stacks in. Now, you can do the same thing. I know I saw buried in here. Even if your paper stack is small, right? So I've got this little Halloween paper sack. That can just go right there as well, okay? Right in between the boxes. Now I'm going to see it, and I'm going to be able to use it, right? If you have room in your 
uh, Halloween box or your um, holiday and season box, you can put your paper stacks right into the boxes as well. Just put them towards the front. Um, let's talk a minute about using boxes. If you're using paper storage boxes of any kind, whether it's a paper handler or a fab file or are just our regular cardboard boxes, if you can put them on the shelf this way, then you can leave your um, labels, your dividers sticking out this way. You can see, you'll be able to see everything that's in the box, the labels for everything that's in the box, and you'll also be able to pull your paper in and out of the box really easily, right? So putting your paper storage boxes on their back is going to make it easier to get to your paper than storing them how they were designed, standing this way, right? So here's the one thing about that. Paper storage boxes were designed to stand this way. And so the way that the bottoms go together, the way that they're engineered, is what gives them that stability to stand up, even when there's paper or something heavy like plastic dividers in them, right? When you turn them on their backs, they don't have, well, it's standing up, but they don't have the same stability as when they are on their bottoms. So generally, you need to have this inside a cube system. So whether you're using something from uh, one of the big scrapbook stores or you, um, are using the IKEA Calyx or Expedit or one of those shelving units. Um, those are perfect. Cube storage is perfect for this type of storage box on its back because it's going to give you the sides, like the bookends, that keep everything standing up. So keep that in mind when you're choosing storage and using it. Always, you know, trying to put it away in the easiest possible way to get it out. Um, our Paper handlers, if you're familiar with them, are the same idea, Oops. Uh, but they have these little handles. So when it's on the shelf, you have your handles pushed back. But if you're somebody that takes your paper with you, whether that's off the shelf to your workspace or to an event, the handles allow you to pull that box off the shelf and drop it into your tote as well. I'll talk a little bit more about products at the end of class. OK, so now next big challenge is scraps. What do you do with your scraps? And there are a couple of ways to sort and organize scraps. If you're using a scrap rack, uh, scraps naturally are going to fit into the pocket pages in your scrap rack. So at the back of my rainbow section, if you go to blue, there are a couple of pages, um, usually two. I try to limit myself to the amount of scraps that I keep. My recommendation to you is to also limit yourself to the amount of scraps that you keep. Um, there's all kinds of reasons that we keep scraps, but if I did the show of hands thing again, a lot of you would probably raise your hands saying I have more scraps than I'll ever use. So if you can kind of pare down your scraps to a minimum size, maybe it's going to be 6 by 12, that would be awesome. 6 by 6, still really a good size to keep. And when you finish your project, anything that doesn't fit that size, six by six, maybe you choose four by six, um, gets into your, either into your donate pile or into your recycle bin or whatever, because you just don't want to be digging through stuff all the time. You're spending your time digging and searching instead of actually spending your time scrapbooking, right? So um, think about that. Choose the minimum scrap size and at the end of your project, anything that doesn't meet your minimum scrap size is going to go recycle or donate or wherever, wherever it belongs. Now, your scraps are going to store with everything else. So if you have blue scraps, they're going to be in your blue section. If you have red scraps, they're going to be in red section. Travel scraps, Christmas scraps, it doesn't matter. You want to keep those, keep things together that you use together, right? So easy for me to store scraps in my scrap rack. That's sort of the preferred method. I'm going to show you our new thing. Some of you have seen a sneak peek of it already. Um, however, people who want to use vertical storage to store scraps have had just a couple of options. They could use a file folder, which is what I used to use, and then all the scraps go in a file folder in the front of that color or in the front of that theme. I can pull out the file folder and flip through it. Or we have our pocketed collection keeper pages that have different size pockets, and people would use those in their with their paper storage. Um, again, I'll show you that stuff later at the end. Um, and then, but people kept asking me for some sort of scrap storage. So, oh, this is our new scrap master. It's not even, I say it's new, but it's not even here yet. 
So this combines that file for, oh, knock my things over. This combines the file folder option with the pocket option. So it has big slash pocket on one side. It's got big 12 by 12 pockets on either side. Now these are exactly 12 by 12. So it's not for paper storage, but if you have a big scrap, something just with the corner cut out or a circle cut out of it, you're gonna have pockets for that. And then it's got smaller pockets with little locking flap tabs as well. So you can store your scraps that way, but then it also acts like a file folder. So if you wanted to put all of your, find something else on in a package, I guess it doesn't matter. If you wanted to put all of your ocean, your beach paper together, you could use that file folder for all of your beach paper, put it on the shelf, put your label here that's beach, pull that out, and you would have your paper and your scraps together in one nice neat little package also makes it easy to travel with that or pull out just what you need right so kind of a cross of the two systems that i sort of grew up using file folder for scraps and then the pocket the collection keeper pockets for scraps as well so um, these will be out next month and spoiler alert i believe they're going to be on hsn in the november 5th 24-hour uh, scrapbook show, or 24-hour craft day as well. So those are coming down the pipe, but that, that keeps your sp scraps with your paper all in one package all together. I don't even have enough of these in yet to use them when I do my paper sorting. I have like one set of them, so I'll do a little bit of paper sorting with them, but I won't have enough to get it done that way. Okay, what are your uh, what are you other things that you need to know about paper sorting? Keep things together you use together. So if you have collections of paper, they can all go into one paper pocket on the shelf, right? Uh, next thing you need to know, how do I protect paper, specialty papers like vellum, right? So th this happens to be eight and a half by eleven vellum, um, but delicate papers that you want to protect need to go into some sort of pocket page. Um, again, like I said, this is eight and a half by 11. There are 12 by 12 pockets like this, but it's still gonna go in whatever category it belongs in, right? So I have glitter paper here somewhere. If I can find it in my stash, there it is. I have glitter paper here. This happens to be good glitter paper that the glitter doesn't come off. I don't need to protect it in anything or rather protect my other paper. But if you had glitter paper, well, this seems to be pretty good, where the glitter rubs and falls off, you're gonna to wanna to put that into a paper pocket as well to protect the paper um, and the other papers from being becoming covered in blue glitter as well. You might have paper that are fabrics or canvas. Um, oh, here's a big piece of vellum, right? You don't wanna tear up the edges and corners of that. So put it into some sort of protective uh, pocket and then file it where it belongs. Do not put your glitter paper in one section, your vellum in another, your fabric papers in another, because that's just one more place you're gonna have to go and look for them when you want to work with something. You're not gonna remember that you have them, so if you don't think about it, you're not gonna use that, right? So your blue glitter paper is gonna go in blue, your vellum paper that looks like spring is gonna go in spring or nature or whatever category your brain works with that. You know, if you have other delicate papers, you want to keep them by in the right theme or category so that you see them rather than segmenting them out by um, type of paper in particular. Um, I'm trying to see what else I have in my pile here. Full collections. Oh, same thing with, um, like this is a die cut thing, right? So if I just put that in a paper storage box, the edges and corners are going to get bent up on that. So putting it into something that's protective is going to be helpful. The other thing that happens if you take classes especially is that you create layouts in class that you um, don't have the pictures for. Where are those? Where do you have all those uh, mostly done projects from classes that you took, right? Get those projects out of wherever they are and put them in the four section system wherever you would look for them. So this is a winter layout, right? 
I don't have, didn't have the pictures for it when I did the layout, but now I'm going to put it in my Christmas or winter section. And when I'm working on that theme, I'm going to be able to flip through and I'm going to see that I have that layout 99% done. And hopefully I'm going to have the right pictures to um, add to the layout, right? That are going to fit right on there. So um, keep that in mind as well. Things that are projects that are mostly done, but you don't have the pictures for, they're going to go by theme. Maybe they're going to go by color. Um, it just depends on the class that you took. I know I've taken some easy laser classes where um, it's just color. And so th it doesn't necessarily have to be, you don't have to have a section called unfinished projects. You want to put that project where you're most likely to use it when you come across those pictures. Oh, uh, Diana Dawson, who took this the challenge years ago, um, sent in that she saved her small scraps that she went to, a six by six scrap size, and then she saved her small scraps to use them when we were getting when we were going to do die stamp and punch organization. So if you want to throw those small scraps into a box or file or something, um, and then you can just use those to make the samples, that, the examples of your stamps, punches, dies that we're going to do in the tools class, um, that's a great use for those, right? We always feel better if we're using our things. So take Diana's advice, stash them away, and then after we do that class, you can either recycle, purge, donate them when we're all done. Okay, so I already talked briefly about ways to store your paper, and most of us are going to use a hybrid system where some of our paper is stored with our supplies and the majority of our paper is stored in vertical storage boxes, right? When you arrange your vertical storage boxes on the shelf, you want to stay in that four-section system, right? So you want to go through um, themes and sentiments, calendar year, and then the rainbow, right? Just like you would in your scrap rack or whatever other tool you're using to organize the rest of your supplies. So keep that in mind as you're placing them on the shelf. All right, that brings us to the end of the challenge. And I am going to sort my paper. I'm thinking, I'm wondering what the best way to do that is, if I should just take a bunch of pictures. If you have some idea about how I should show you what I'm doing when I'm sorting paper, um, post up on Facebook or, or send us an email or whatever, and then um, I'll either just let the video camera run and then it can fast forward, I can f put it on fast speed, um, or we'll just do some pictures. Okay, so this week's challenge. Number one, or your, your uh, checklist for this week. Number one is to create your organized only space. So if you were completely befuddled last week when you read that on your list because I didn't talk about it, this is the week to do it. Um, number two, if you're gonna use a widget notebook, which I would strongly encourage you to do, um, make your widget notebook. Um, choose a storage tool for your paper. Are you going to go uh, vertical? Or are you going to go flat? You're going to put in a scrap rack. Whatever you're going to do, choose those storage tools and get them ready to go. Create your um, dividers or templates for sorting. And remember, you're going to start with your themes and sentiments list. That's how you're going to get that done. Um, are you going to do products at the end too? Yeah, I'll do products at the end. I promise. I promise. Karen's reminder. Sometimes I say I'm going to do products and then I forget at the end. Okay, so Robin has asked, my problem is that I have a whole room and I'm not sure how to empty the whole area to create the organized only space. I just have no place to empty into, so I do it by zones. Um, it, I'm not sure if she, that's not really a question. It's a great solution, right? So if you're working in zones, just kind of the premise, clean out that one space and move everything over and then fill up that one space and then you can clean out the next space and start again that way, right? So um, it sounds like uh, Robin's right on track. Now, I will tell you that if you make things inconvenient for yourself or your family members um, by taking all of your things and putting them outside of your craft room, line the hallway, right? especially if you're somebody like me who has a hard time dealing with a mess, um, it is more motivational to work harder, work faster, and get more done. So if you take things all the way out of your room and set them somewhere where they're an inconvenience to you, 
if you're that personality type, it can be helpful as well. But it sounds like, Robin, you're just on the perfect track, working in zones, cleaning out one area at a time. Catherine says, do folks have a B section for one or two miscellaneous B items, or do they figure out where it would go? Just realized that I may not have understood something basic years ago. Um, so I guess that's more a question for the crowd. Um, I would have a B section if I just had one or two. Well, I shouldn't say that. I might not. I might have, you might have a section that's A through D, right? So if on your themes and sentiments list, you have um, animals, beach, cat, Disney, you don't need to have A, B, C, D. You could have a tab that's just labeled A through D, and then within that section, you could tag, these are my, you know, cat papers, Disney papers, whatever else I said. So you don't necessarily have to have, which is also an, a good point, that uh, you don't necessarily have to have a tab for everything. When you make your tabs, I don't think I said this, when you make your tabs, don't make tabs like I did when I first did my sort for all the letters of the alphabet, right? So when I first did it, I made those 12 Bs for all the letters of the alphabet, except I was smart enough at the end to put like W, X, Y, Z all on a one, but everything else I made a letter for. I hadn't created my themes and sentiments list first, and I was just like, okay, this is, I'll just make, do it alphabetically. Um, but if I look at my themes and sentiments list, I only have, a, B, C, D, F, G, H, M, N, P, S, T, V, W. I only have 14 letters here, right? So the other 20, I guess I put four on one, the other you know, 10 cards that I made, I didn't even need. So use your themes and sentiments list. You may have a tab that is just A, B, C on one tab because you only have one category under each of those letters, right? So the value of this is not only that it's gonna guide you through the process, but it's also gonna define for you how many divider tabs you need to make and how they need to be labeled. So I hope that answers your question, Catherine. Diane says, I always have trouble with blues and greens, namely turquoise teal telling which are blue and which are green. There is no easy solution. I have the same trouble, right? Because you look at something and you go, this is blue. And then when you put it next to the blues, it looks more green. And there, the only way to do that is to get completely out of control and pull out your color wheel and go through hues and tones or just uh, choose blue or green, put it in there. And don't worry about it. The bigger, the most important thing here in this whole process is that you should be able to pick up your paper and drop it in where it goes at this speed, right? You don't want to be thinking about every sheet of paper. Oh, that's blue. Oh, that's green. Boom, in it goes. If it's taking you longer than picking it up and putting it away to make that decision, it means you're out of willpower. You need a little brain food. You might need to go outside and take a walk, have a cup of coffee, glass of wine, whatever it is, but you probably need to walk away from it, right? The decision process should be fast. For those of you who um, have read Kathleen McGonigal's book on the willpower instinct, when your brain starts to shut down, when you get tired, um, your decision process slows down as well. So it's a sign that you might need to take a, take a walk and get away from that project or come back to it the next day or whatever. Um, but again, especially if you're going vertical with your paper, if you put that blue-green paper in blue and it's a little more green, when you thumb through that paper looking for the right color, you're gonna still see the corner or the edge of that paper and you're gonna be able to pull it out and use it. So, um, but just don't, don't stress out about it too much. I'm, I should ask you, Diane, how much paper do you have? You'll probably be able to find exactly the color that you want just by major groupings. How do you prevent paper from bending in vertical storage? It doesn't matter if your paper bends in vertical storage. If you put this paper, I don't, I don't know, I can't get to the paper here. There we go. So this is a common concern, but I'm not gonna choose something that's really strong. Okay, here's like this regular paper, right? If I put this sheet of paper in vertical storage and it bends over like that, First of all, it's probably not gonna bend over quite that much because, you should see how it's in there, yeah. 
um, because you're probably going to have more than one sheet of paper in there. But even if it bends over like that, and even if it stays in that position for a long time, when you take that paper out and lay it on the table, it's just going to go flat. So people kind of freak out about that, that if their paper, the way to avoid it is to fill your paper storage boxes and kind of do the same divide and conquer that we talked about when we were, um, when I was using the dividers to sort, right? So keep your paper storage boxes full and that's going to keep your paper more vertical. But um, papers, the vast majority of it, even if it's bent a little bit in your paper storage box, the minute you take it out and lay it flat, it's just going to go flat. So, you know, it's, it's, should it, it's not a concern. I mean, it is a concern, but it doesn't need to be a concern, right? It's, co it's a common question. Uh, I've used vertical paper storage exclusively for, I mean, other than what's in my scrap rack, and I have never had a piece of paper that didn't go flat, so it, it, it works perfect. If you use sleeves in the scrap rack, how can you see all the paper? If you put multiple sh sheets in one sleeve, you can't. That's a simple answer. You can kind of stagger it out. You can put about 10 sheets of paper in a super size single pocket and you can kind of stagger out five one way and then put five in on the back side the other way and kind of stagger them out and see a little bit of an edge. Most of the paper in my scrap rack is in a super size single page with the pocket flap tucked behind it. And so let's say um, St. Patrick's Day, if I go there, it's easy for me to look through those few sheets of paper that are in that pocket, which again, takes you back to when to decide, should it be in a pocket in your scrap rack or should it be on your, in your vertical paper storage um, shelf, right? So if you have so much paper in that pocket that it's hard to dig through or that you're, che you're chewing up the tops or edges of corners, then it probably belongs in vertical storage where you can just thumb through it and see it all at one time, right? Um, but you can stagger it out a little bit before we did vertical storage. That's exactly what I did. I had all my paper in multiple scrap racks. Um, and then I just kind of staggered it out, especially with colored paper. It kind of, you could see, it was easy to see a little edge of each of the colors that were in there. Um, but I would keep my scrap rack paper to under 10 sheets, or 10 sheets or under in a super size single, and then it's kind of easy to look through and see the edge. Um, I have more than not purchased solid paper to match the printed paper I purchased. No particular theme. Where? Question mark, scrap rack or shelf with dominant color. This is an interesting sort of conundrum, right? We want to keep things together, we use together, and at the same time we want to maximize the use of the things that we have. So if you bought pink floral paper um, with matching pink cardstock, if you put them both in pink, when you're ready to work with pink, you're going to see that pink cardstock and you're going to see the pink floral and you're going to see all the other pink pattern paper and all the other cardstock that those two things work together with, right? So if you can, even though they're matchy matchy, put them in the rainbow section or whatever section it is they belong in, the odds that you're going to use them grow exponentially, right? Because when you thought, I'm only going to use these things together, now you might think, oh, this pink uh, paper is perfect to go with this turquoise blue polka dot, and you wouldn't have used it if you had that pink paper and the pink floral paper tucked away somewhere else. And when you needed the pink paper and the pink floral paper, if you didn't remember that it was tucked away somewhere else, then you would be going to your pink section and your floral section choosing something else anyway because you didn't remember that um, those things were together. Now, if you want to keep them together, I understand that. I know like the, the emotional part of it is, uh, or the, what is the term? There's a, a term in psychology for it. Um, if you want to keep them together, you could put them into a paper handler or a paper storage pocket together and put them both into, as the example, pink, and then they would be together in the pink section, right? Um, when we're talking different, so those are generic things, but when you're talking about things like Christmas paper where you have uh, stripes and florals and solids that all came together as a kit, like something like basic gray, of course you want to keep all those things together. They're all going to be in, in the Christmas section together in a pocket um, labeled probably basic gray. 
so that's a different story but when you're just talking about color the more you see it the more likely you are to use it or the more opportunities you're going to have to use it so when you start tucking things away now you're going to rely on your brain to remember that you tucked that away um, and then to remember where you tucked it away and then to go look for it as opposed to just flipping through your pink section is there a recommendation for permanent labels or making them stick to the divider tabs all of my label tabs all of my label tabs with a brother label maker, maker peeled off my dividers. I don't know because that is exactly what I use, I think. Yes, I use this label maker and mine are all stuck on. Um, so, I'm sorry to say I don't have a good answer. Now, maybe um, if you if you wrap the labels around, so if you print your label extra long, um, and then you wrap the label around the the whole divider tab, so it sticks to itself. Um, there may be like a heat or humidity or or something else going on, but all of mine these have all these came out of my. Um, I'm trying to see if any of them are peeling off. These came out of my box boxes. The colored ones are all just one little short tab, but like this one, the camping one, the, it's longer, so I wrapped it around, and then I printed another one that said camping and wrapped that around and went over the top of the other one. So that might help, but I'm not sure, and I don't know... To be honest with you, maybe um, brother or, or, or these types of th machines in general, maybe they have different types of um, different types of sticky adhesive or whatever on the back of them. So this one is um, this one doesn't have like little cuts in it. It's kind of hard to peel the paper off of the sticker. Um, so I don't know if that makes a difference or not. I'll try to do a little research and see. I'll have to ask around and see if anybody else has a label, ma label maker at home here that's had that same experience. Um, if we don't have shelving to hold up binders, could you offer bookends? We need them a little larger than the usual ones you would purchase in the world. I have a great idea for you if you need something bigger. Telena, can you run downstairs and sitting next to the warehouse desk, there is a box of shelf dividers. Can you go grab that? Oh, uh, I don't know if these work or not, but we're gonna get Telena. I just um, ordered these shelf dividers um, for our warehouse. And depending on the kind of shelf that you're using and how wide the shelf is, so one of the things about the IKEA Expedit is that all the shelves were a little bit wider. The Calyx, the shelves are a little bit narrower. Um, so you may be able to, and I'm so glad you asked this because I have the same trouble when I'm using our big binders, right? Because they're so big, um, it's hard to get them to stand up because they're a little bit slippery because they're plastic. So, oh, I just, what a. Everybody loves Amazon. This is like an unboxing video now, right? So. Oh, and I'm going to show you our new paper cart in use today, too. Some of you have already um, seen it. I'm trying to keep this away from my microphone because I know that makes it. So these little guys, oh my gosh, I am just surrounded by things back here. I'm never going to get out. These little guys, if I can get them apart. Oh they're zip tied together so 
Let's start with cutting the, the cutting of the zip tie. I'm not very good at this unboxing thing, am I? I'm gonna have to practice it. Good gravy. I'm gonna need something a little more serious here. I don't remember how much these were, but they weren't horribly expensive. I think I got, I think there's eight of them or something and they were like $30. So, how these work, you can see this little thing right here. That is going to slide onto your shelf, and then this little foot part right here gives it stability. Help! So, let's just test it out, shall we? Let me clear a path here out of my chair. Sorry, I'm challenging Telena's new photography or new video skills. So, this is just going to slide onto the shelf like this, right? And it's pretty solid. It's going to give you that bookend that you were asking about. What amazing timing you have um, for keeping things straight up and down. So, these binders, let me find one that's, right? They're hard to put on the shelf because they're so big. But now I cannot believe this was so timely. I'm gonna have I may not send these out to the warehouse. I may use them myself. Whoa! I, I'm so excited. What a great question and what a perfect time to ask it. So sorry. There's your solution. What are they called? These are the ones that I bought. They are called Eve Lots Wire Shelf Dividers for Wood Shelves. Look at that. <sighs> I love it when a plan comes together. Okay. Oh, I'm going to show you. I'm going to. Can I, can, Leanne, can I just push all this stuff off on you so I have a little room here? Um. Dun, dun, dun. So that would also work. Um, that would also work if you were trying to put paper storage boxes on a shelf like this on their backs, like I was talking about before. That the cardboard boxes, if you want them to stand up straight, right? That that would be that would help you keep your cardboard boxes standing up straight. Okay, what do I want to share with you? I'm going to talk about products in just a minute. Um, so for those of you who want to learn about what we sell, how it comes, let us not make the same mistake we made last week. Is that the end of my questions? Yes, okay, good. Um, so our latest and greatest, whoo, arriving soon, is our new paper storage cart and this little guy is quite a bit heavier duty than our um, companion cart right it is designed to hold a hundred pounds of paper holy moly the beautiful thing about it is is that it's got that same low profile so it will still go under your tabletop this is an eight and a half by eleven um, paper storage box in the top right here. Um, so even with that in there, it'll still slide under most tabletops. It's 27 and a half inches. This one's 29, right? The 12 by 12 paper storage boxes can be used on the top and on the bottom as well. So you could do double layers of 12 by 12 paper storage. So maybe you're going to do all of your themes on the top all of your holidays on the bottom. Maybe you're going to do all rainbow on your cart. I don't know, but it's going to be so simple to store up to five boxes of paper on each shelf. Now, I left this out here. So this is the little divider. I'm going to show you how they go in because they're kind of, they have these little rubber tips on them. Oh, I can't get it up. I'm going to show you the one that I already took the rubber tip off. How about that? So it just looks like that. And you just slide this one, this part in the back. 
and then you just drop this in the front hole and that creates that divider and stabilizes the shelf. But if you want to take that off so you can fill it with paper, you don't have to have these dividers in. However, they do come in really handy if you're segmenting things like punch boards or uh, paper trimmers or that type of thing. This will also fit any of our 15 inch desk made. So if you saw the sneak peek, you saw um, some of the desk made items on the top shelf here. So whether it's inks or pens or um, basic tools or whatever, you can use that top for that as well and then just use the bottom for paper storage. So the paper cart is going to be available. It's supposed to arrive the end of this month. Um, again, spoiler alert, it's going to be on Home Shopping Network on the show on November 5th, I believe. Um, so it'll be available there. We will have them live on our website as soon as they arrive at the warehouse also though. So a great way to make your paper portable. Again, you can see the giant casters that we put on this and they're just so much heavy, more heavy duty. Um, so they're just going to hold that weight of paper storage. Okay, let's talk about the different paper storage products that we make. Um, so for those of you who know, let's finish the class. How about that? Sorry, I get so excited. I'm just going to go through what you need to do this week. I'm going to start from the top, from the beginning. Somewhere I buried my glasses. There they are. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is create your organized only space if you haven't already done that. You're going to create your widget notebook. You're going to choose proper paper storage tools for you. Ooh. Ooh, I gotta go back. Another thing I didn't talk about last week. I'm so sorry. I'm just going on and on today. Um, there's a blog post up about what kind, what kind of crafter are you? And that was sort of born from people saying, um, I'm not sure which tools to use. And so now as you go through, we're trying to add that information to all our products on the website that this product works best if you're like Kathy and you're gonna have to read the uh, blog post to figure out who you are or, or who you might be a combination of. And the idea behind that is to help you understand your habits um, as a crafter better so that you can make the right decisions for what tools are gonna work best for you. So you might see something that you think, oh, that's great, I'm gonna get that. But because of the kind of crafter you are, it's probably not gonna be your best choice, right? So something like our stash and store boxes, these little boxes, these guys right here, those are awesome if you always stay at home, right? Literally at my fingertips, I have hundreds of rolls of washi tape. I can take the tray out, bring it to my workspace. There's all my blue washi tape. When I'm done with it, I can put it right back. Super easy. But that's not a good tool if you're somebody who, uh, like uh, Mary Mobile Maker, who always travels with their supplies, right? That would be the, a bad choice for someone who is constantly moving their supplies around as opposed to somebody who always works at home. So that's what that blog post is about. It's called, What Kind of Crafter Are You? I'm, I'll ask Karen to put up another link, but I think it was in last week, which is why I'm talking about it again now. So, and that is the whole purpose of it. Um, so the next thing you're gonna do is create your templates <coughs> or dividers for sorting. Remember, follow your themes and sentiments list to do that. This week, your goal is to sort at least eight inches of paper. And I'm going to recommend that you start small and start now. That's our theme this week. Start with like an inch or two inches. Finish it. Finish that project of the one inch or two inches of paper. And then your brain is going to be lit up. I can do this. Look at me go. It's, I've done already my first today's goal, right? You're just going to be inspired. And then it gets easier to go through the process. But your goal at the end of the week is to have sorted eight inches of paper. Um, sort your scraps. So choose your minimum scrap size and either incorporate those scraps using your scrap rack pages or using file folders right in with the color or theme or whatever it is for those scraps. Um, put your newly organized paper storage solutions into your organized only space. Um, post your progress so that you get in on the prize drawing. Um, and then enjoy your reward for challenge number two and definitely take advantage of the reward and keep yourself motivated and inspired with that. All right, so I am going to do a quick product presentation now. So for those of you who are in need of paper storage products or you just have questions about what we offer, I will go through quickly the variety of different products that we, that we make that might solve your 
problem. So I'm going to try to give myself a little bit of a tidy up right here. Can you just grab that and stack it over there and it'll be out of the way. All right. So let's start with the basic. If you always craft at home, if you are Kathy, uh, craft at home, what is her last name? Kathy Craft Room. Um, the, the paper storage box boxes that I use for the demo are a great solution. They're not designed to be transported. They're designed to act as dividers on your shelf. You get five of them in a set. Um, they're called Paper Junkie Straight Up Paper Storage Boxes. Um, and I believe three or four of them will fill a cube in your IKEA Calyx or Expedit um, type cube system. And if they are in that cube system, you can put them on their back. And now you can put them on their back on a shelf as well if you wanted to do that. I'm so excited about this. Oh, so exciting. Okay. I'm such a geek. I'm sorry. Okay, so paper storage boxes. They come in sets of five, right? You're going to be able to hold 500 sheets of paper per box. That's 2,500 sheets of paper you can organize in those boxes. They work in conjunction with our paper storage box dividers, which come in sets of 10. Mine are kind of messed up here, so I'm going to put this right here. One, two, three, four, oh, no, five. Duh. So they come in sets of 10, and they're like this when you get them. They all look, this, they, there's two sets of five. And the reason they're designed that way is so that if you are using your box straight up and down, you can put them in, and the bottom one is going to be above the top of the box. But if you're using your boxes this way, then you can, let's see if I have them going the right way here in my little stat. Then you can flip-flop them. So you have one set of five, so they run just like this, right, if they're this way on the shelf. So you can use them either way, over the top of the box or sticking out the edge if you've got the box on its back. So this is the A26 paper storage, paper junkie paper storage boxes, and then the um, paper storage box dividers. If you go to the tab on our page that's called... I think it's called Paper Storage Solutions. We'll put a link up, of course. Um, all of these items will be on that page. Okay, then once you've got your, oh, then you've got your choice here. This is the paper handler. So this is for 12 by 12 paper. Um, it has the pull-up handles. Again, you can use it straight up and down like this, or you can use it on its back like this with your um, paper poking out. Paper poking out. You can use it with the dividers this way, but the divide this is taller in the front, so the dividers aren't going to stick over the top of the front of this. You have if you're using the paper storage box dividers, you have with this you need to use it on its back. You can use it standing up too, and then use those as files, but they're not going to stick out over the top. So that is the paper handler. This comes in a set called the paper manager kit with paper pockets, which is this guy. So you, this has a little tab on the side of it right here. That tab does, sorry, Talena, I don't, it's not very visual, is it? Does not have a label on it? That tab does stick off over the top of the um, paper handler box. So this is a paper pocket. And then we also make what's called a collection keeper. There's one right here, but it's not full, so it's hard to see. See, if I hadn't let my paper turn into such a mess, I would have these all ready to go. The collection keeper has the tabs on the side also. So you get three. Three paper pockets, three collection keepers with the paper manager kit. You can also buy these two things individually, just paper pockets, just collection keepers. Um, we're out of stock on them right now. Sorry. But there will be back. We're out of stock on a lot of stuff. There was a typhoon in Hong Kong, which put a hitch in everybody's get-along about getting products overseas. But in the next couple of weeks, um, everything that we're out of should be back for you. So this is a collection keeper. It has three pockets on the front, 
and one 12 by 12 pocket on the back. So this is great if you buy um, paper and then you have a couple of stickers or embellishments, you wanna keep them all together, or if you're using it for scraps. So it could be, you know, uh, big scraps in the back, smaller scraps in the front pockets, okay? Then coming soon, which you already saw in class, is going to be the Scrap Master. There's one huge advantage to the Scrap Master over the Collection Keeper, and that is that the front and back of the Scrap Master are flat, which means it's easy to slide in and out. The flapped pockets are on the inside. So when you try to slide this in and out, the flaps can get hung up on things, right? Um, so if you're using it to, for scrap storage, as you slide it in and out of the box, you may experience that flaps getting hung up. When we designed this, we put the pockets and the flaps on the inside so you're not going to hang up on anything sliding it in and out of that box. So the Scrap Master, this will come in a set of five, has five label tabs on it as well, will stick out the end of your paper storage boxes or your paper handlers. This will be out um, probably within the next two weeks. And again, as I mentioned, it will be on the Home Shopping Network 24-hour craft day in November. Okay. Uh, then we have, so the paper handler, go back to that, comes in three sizes. This is the um, 8 and a half by 11 size, and we actually call this A4 8 and a half by 11 because it's, wide enough for 8.5 by 11, but tall enough for A4. So if you use A4 papers, I know a lot of you like to purchase your papers out of the UK, um, and they're, uh, they're a little bit taller, they're that A4 size, they're gonna fit in here as well. As well as um, the A4 magazines, right, that come, uh, a lot of times in the big box stores, they have the scrapbooking and crafting magazines from the UK, and they're also that A4 size, so they'll fit in there as well. So the paper handler comes in 12 by 12. It comes in the 8.5 by 11 or A4, and then it also comes in a little small version. It's so cute, isn't it cute? The, so this is the 6 by 6, right? So if you are a Stephanie Bernard Stamps of Life fan, this fits all of her papers, and then um, they all have pocket sizes that will fit inside them. So this is a 6x6 six six pocket. We have an 8.5x11 pocket, and then we also have a 12x12 12 12 pocket, which you can use for scraps and for dividers. So whether you're using 12x12, 8.5x11, or 6x6, they all will have, again, some of that stuff is out of stock, but it's all on its way, I promise. All right, so last but not least in the paper storage uh, choices from a totally Tiffany brand. We have the Fab File. So, okay, who's, who should use it? The, the cardboard paper storage boxes, I already said, if you always craft at home, that's a great solution. It's visible, it's accessible, it's open, it's easy to get to. If you sometimes craft at home, sometimes travel, or if your craft stash at home is somewhere else, maybe in a closet, and you have to bring it to the place that you're gonna scrapbook or craft, maybe the dining room table, paper handlers are a great choice, right? Pull up the handles, bring it out, pull up the handles, drop it in your tote. Fab files also come in 12 by 12, eight and a half by 11. Uh, the new eight and a half by 11 fab file is actually A4 as well. So when that arrives, it'll be both sizes, um, six by six, eight by eight. These little boxes, pull up handle, label on the side, include the pockets on the inside. So these are already labeled for rainbow, right? Is that what they say? Oh no, this is themes. Um, same thing, straps can go in and then papers behind of each of the tabs. So all the sizes of fab files include some sort of divider on the inside. Now, who should use fab files? Fab files work great for people who always travel because they have this lockdown lid, right? So that's even if you're going to throw that around in your car or gonna, it's going to take some motion, it has a lockdown lid. So if you always travel with your supplies, these are a good option. 
They're also a good option if you have to store your supplies somewhere where they might be getting more dusty than the norm, right? Again, because of the lid, maybe if they're out in the garage and you have to bring things in or something like that, the lid is going to help keep your papers a little bit more protected. It also has the handle so it's easy to carry them around as well. So fab files for, for mobile makers are a great option. Um, paper handlers are an awesome choice for people who craft about like Karen or Sophia in our list. Um, and then of course the paper storage boxes are a great option for Kathy Craft Room if you're always crafting at home. <sighs> I think that's everything. Um, if I missed anything, I'll try to put a post up about it on Facebook. But that gives you some good ideas about the different products that we offer and who should use them, why they should use them, where they should use them, etc. Uh, look for the paper storage cart to be popping up in an email soon. And then for those of you who don't know, uh, Home Shopping Network, the next 24-hour craft day is going to be October 9th. So if you've never experienced a Home Shopping Network 24-hour craft day, tune in on October 9th. There's great demos, great deals. You know, one of the best things about HSN is that you actually get to see how products are used, right? So uh, whether it's a new, new die cutter or it's a new inks or new watercolor pencils, whatever it is, you get this sort of mini lesson in how to use that product um, uh, before you buy it. So it's really a great way to learn about new things, learn new techniques, and then tips and tricks for actually using the products as well. So I'm going to share one really quick with you, one little quick uh, tip. I love Xyron. I've always loved my Xyron. I've had it for years. I use it all the time. The one thing I don't like about Xyron, or I didn't like, is that um, it always seemed to leave some sort of sticky residue around the edge of whatever I had turned into a sticker and I had to kind of rub it off. And Beth Kingston, um, who um, is the Xyron presenter on HSN, I mentioned it to her two years later after, right? And, and she said, oh, that's because you need to rub it uh, when it's still in the plastic, right? So, and I was like, really? And she goes, yeah, do you ever notice I always do that in my demo? I rub it and then I peel it off. And sure enough, Beth Kingston is right. So if you're like me and you've been annoyed by that little sticky residue around the edge of your Xyron, before you pull the plastic off, give it a good rub and then you won't have sticky residue anymore. Woo. Learn something new every day. Cross off your list, ladies. All right, thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great week. Get a lot of organizing done. Don't forget to post your progress post because I want you to have a chance to win a fabulous prize. Ooh, maybe we'll give away a paper cut. That would be a fabulous All right, take care. Have a great week.